Hello everyone. Thank you so much for joining me today. Really appreciate it. It's a brutally hot day in Kansas. We can't talk about anything but the weather around here and we're dressing appropriately, which is partly what we're going to talk about today. Dressing for summer, although what I'm going to talk about also is dressing for fall as well. So I want to start out by telling you of some thoughts that I've had this morning as I was waking up. My daughter Alex gives me books. I think she's trying to reform me. But one of the books that she gave me for Christmas was a book called The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry. And it's by John Mark Comer, who I think is a friend or someone who she's associated with uh, through her church work. And I, I opened the book, and in the first page, I realized why she'd sent it to me. I've been in a hurry my entire life. I can't remember when I wasn't in a hurry. And of course, there are good things about being in a hurry, and there are not so good things about being in a hurry. And since the word hurry is slashed through in this particular title, then you know that they're going to talk about why hurry is perhaps not what we should be pursuing. And so I've been thinking a lot about this and realizing that sometimes I have not pursued the things that I want to because I've been in a hurry, I've been working, I've been traveling, whatever. So the last year and a half has provided me with some time and opportunities to do some things that I've never had a chance to do. My garden, I call it a garden, my flowers and lawn have never looked so great. My house is in order. I've cleaned out my basement, some closets have gotten cleaned out, I've remodeled a bathroom, and as you may know, I took, out, took up the uh, art of watercoloring, which I have been doing, but recently I ran into another book which has given me some inspiration, and it's by Samantha Dion Baker, it's called Draw Your Day. This is a great book, I ordered it from Museum of Modern Art, and I am a member there, only not because I get to go there, but because I like to support organizations like that. And this is one of the books that they were featuring, although you can buy this book in other places as well. But it's, of course, about recording your daily activities in pencil or drawings or writings or whatever. And I have been doing that recently, over the course of the last year. And this isn't fine art by any means. But it's the idea of drawing, for me, just some things that have been around me. So here's my favorite sewing tool, a ripper, and my little scissors, my little red-handled scissors, and then some drawing tools and so forth. Well, what I haven't done is started to add text or writing in pen or pencil, which I may start doing, being inspired by this book. So I'm just telling you that I'm encouraging you to take a little time every day as I've been doing. For, t for me, it's evening time. For some, it might be morning coffee time. It might be in the car while you're waiting on something, you're standing in line, whatever. Uh, whatever time of day suits you, I've taken some time to draw some very common things around me, but things that are just handy and mean something to me, and I'm really enjoying it. So I'm encouraging you to take some time and do something like that. So Sunday is August 1st, and that is the day of launching the August, am I in the right month? Yes, August, so confident. We have a very exciting project for you. For those of you who are members of So Confident yearly, you will know about it at midnight on August 1st. For those of you who are intrigued enough to tune in next Tuesday, I will be showing the project for August, and you'll get to see those finished garments. We have two, the same garment, but in two different uh, colorways. So check, check your email on Sunday for that. Um, the video will re be released August 20th, and of course a week after that is the Q&A. For those of you who are members of So Confident, you know that this coming Thursday are, are the question and answer sessions, one at noon, one at six o'clock central daylight time. So I hope to see you then. I've already had some questions uh, that need to be answered. Thank you for submitting those. If any of, 
of the rest of you have questions I would love to know about in advance. It gives me a chance to really study things. So that's so confident. There's still time to sign up for the yearly membership. You get everything back from January coming forward and then of course every project through December and you can sign up by the month as well. If you have signed up for various months previous to this month, we always give you credit towards a yearly membership, so we encourage you to do that as well. The Gardenia is August project. I've shown this before, but I want to show it to you again because it happens to be in the fabric that I'm going to talk about today, which is viscose and linen. So here's the dress version with the extended sleeve and sleeve band the tie, the tux, the tuck at the neckline, makes a great summer dress. And this is the kind of dress you want to wear in Kansas on a Tuesday when it's 105 degrees. There you go. Did I say August? I meant to say July. Sorry about that. That's July's project. August is something totally different. Very different, but very exciting. This is the last week in the series of fitting for our Facebook Live sessions, and today we're going to talk about pants. And I know that that is, without a doubt, the trickiest thing to do is to fit yourself with pants. And very few of us have the advantage of having a sewing buddy and for sure a fitting buddy. So I've put together the Fitting Encyclopedia, which has nine or ten different techniques on fitting pants, things that you can do yourself. I also have a class on Craftsy called Fitting Solo, and we use actually the Mosa Pants pattern, which is a sewing workshop pattern, in that class on Craftsy. So I encourage you to take that class. I go into much more depth of fitting yourself uh, for pants in that class, but those techniques are also in this book, this Fitting Solo encyclopedia. And then, as you recall, because I've talked about it for the whole month, we've put together a fitting workbook. And every page relates to a page in the encyclopedia. But in this book, you get to actually do something. You get to cut out a template. And the instructions are written on a page. And you get to actually do that technique. So you get some practice before you do it on yourself, which I think is always handy. Plus, it's a reference for you. You've done it, you've seen it, you've cut it, you've drawn it, and I think that tends to uh, help you keep the information for the future, not just reading it one time, but to actually do it as well. So the, uh, the encyclopedia and the fitting workbook are both out this month, and we're promoting it all month. So I want to talk to you a little bit about pants fitting. I had a hard time deciding which technique actually to show you today because there are so many that all of us need. I couldn't decide whether we had more people who needed a full seat adjustment or a flat seat adjustment. It was kind of a toss up actually, and so I opted for the full seat. And I also have trouble deciding whether I should use the word seat, derriere, butt, behind, whatever. We're settling on seat today and in the books. So here's what you need to do. After you've determined your starting size, which is your full hip measurement, you still may need some shaping and fullness in the back. And so four inches above this crotch point, four inches above and four inches below, you're going to draw a line that is perpendicular to the straight of grain at a right angle. Both of these lines are perpendicular. And you want to go five or six inches in. It can be almost to the middle of the leg, but five or six inches is about the range. And once you've drawn those lines horizontally, then you connect them with a vertical line. And you cut along those three lines and take this entire wedge and move it out. Now I've moved this out an inch. The range is, if you are a size 16 or below, an inch or less is going to be plenty. A half inch is more normal. Of course, we're working on one half of the pattern, so that means you would be adding an inch through there. I've done an inch so you can see it a little bit better. 
If you are above a size 16, then you know that you can go to as much as an inch and a half. This is a little bit of an experiment, so you're probably going to want to make a muslin afterwards. But just to make sure, this is what we call a major adjustment for a full seat. There are other ways to do it, which are also in the fitting workbook and encyclopedia for a minor adjustment, but this is the major adjustment. You know your shape. If you are someone who, who has a pretty good shape back there, that you've, uh, you're built that way or you've enjoyed life in such a way, you know who you are. Once you have moved this out, so this is, a, this is representing the amount of fabric that's being added through there, then you need to reconnect some lines. So you start from this point out here, and this part of a pant is usually straight, so this happens really at the top of the curve. So you're going to, from here on, draw a straight line back up to the original waist, or whatever waist width you have adjusted for your pattern, but that is a straight line. And then you need to reconnect through here. And you can see that I've shaved off a little bit here and added a little bit here. But that line was drawn using a hip curve. And you need to find that spot where things connect pretty well. I always have to stand back and really look at this in total. It's very difficult because you've got this line out here and you've got this point in here and you're not sure where to go. But if you stand back and look at the overall shape, you'll know that that's a nice, gentle connection. And I think you can feel when that's, that's good. So I'm using my clear hip curve ruler for that. I'm using my straight edge plastic ruler to connect there. And I might have used my curve runner tool to originally measure this curve to compare that to a crotch curve that you have measured. And our measurement charts are in that workbook. So you can record uh, what your measurements are, what your stride measurement is in total. And then of course I've used, I can use either my medical exam paper, which I use most often, but I also like to use vellum. And in this case, I've used vellum so that perhaps you can see it a little bit more. And if you need to do that as well, vellum is a nice thing to have on hand. I've taped it all down with my Scotch removable tape so that if I've made a mistake and need to adjust it, let's say I've made my muslin, I realized I've taken this out too far, I can remove that tape, it won't tear the paper, and I can readjust it and put it where it needs to be. I've used, I've used magic marker, which you won't use. You're going to use your red pencil, your Prismacolor number 20045 Carmine red pencil with an eraser to make your permanent lines or semi-permanent lines because I've certainly erased them, erased them so often that I've had to add an eraser to my eraser pencil. So those are the tools that you're going to need. And I want to remind you about the other tool that we use uh, a lot, and that is the tape measure that has a number one. First of all, both sides are in inches and metric, both. But they have the number one at the opposite ends on the opposite sides. And I talked last week about how I add a ring to one end so that I can measure the girth of an arm or maybe even around the waist, and that's really been a helpful so I actually have two of these, one that has a ring and one that doesn't. And we have these on our website as well. So are there any questions about this? Okay. Uh, the major seat adjustment causes another problem for me because I end up with way too much fabric in the back leg because my legs are not large. Yes. That's, that's an adjustment. That's a really, really, really good adjustment. Uh, once you do this, then you do what is on page. Can you what she said? Oh, the question was, when I, when I make this major adjustment, when she makes this major adjustment, then it causes the leg to be too wide. You see, we've added a little bit here. 
We've taken a little bit away here, but added some here. So anyway, the back leg width is too full. And that adjustment is on page 36. So once you've done this, then you take this adjustment and you reduce the width of the back leg. So that's the, that's the second adjustment. Um, how does this adjustment change the hip size? Well, it increases it by the amount that you have widened it. And that is something that is a little bit of a guessing game. This is about shape now. Uh, so you have to determine how much you're going to spread it, whether it's a little bit, quarter of an inch, up to an inch if you are 16 or below, or up to an inch and a half if you're above a size 16. So it does change, obviously, the dimension of the hips. Um, how about adjusting for a big tummy? Uh, that is um, an adjustment on, let's see, a big tummy. Is in here. Well, it really is in here. Why can't I find it? <laughs> All right. Um, there, there are a couple of ways to do it. Uh, one is, is to uh, split the pattern. Whoops, I'm on the back. Take the front, <laughs> the front pattern piece and split horizontally and spread it, and then you re-establish the front line. That's one way uh, that we, to do it. But they're in this book as well. Do you do the opposite with the wedge for a flat butt adjustment? No, the flat butt is totally different. Uh, there's no cutting out of a wedge. The flat butt is a pinching through here and tapering it to nothing here. So it's pinching it right at the top of the curve. That changes the, the um, uh, tilt of the garment, I call it. I do that a lot on people. Because even though we might gain weight in certain areas, tummies or whatever, we don't always gain it in the butt. I don't see any other fitting okay. questions for right now. OK. Oh, great. Wait, somebody just popped up here. Hold on. Make sure. Oh, How do you identify each of these issues? How do you know where to start? Well, if you um, traditionally are someone who's buying, a, say you're going to the store and you are buying a pair of pants and to get them around your hips, then you have all kinds of excess fabric at the waist perhaps. Um, or if you could take a picture of yourself and see that there's a strain across the back where uh, there's a strain at the, uh, the fabric across the fullest part of your seat is strained or if you are seeing that the crotch is really not um, an, an attractive look that it's how do I say this um, how do we say this uh, it's, it, it's just if it's just tight back it's there. tight it's tight back there <laughs> <laughs> That's, yeah. I want to give you the Kansas slang, but I'm afraid to do that. I'm probably going to offend somebody. <laughs> okay. Um, do you increase the crotch adjustment first or after this adjustment? Oh, this is, this is first. And then strides. Yeah. Okay. That's all I see. Okay. All right. So little brief pants fitting. So I have on the Hudson pants and I have on the splice top and Deb just walked in the door so she's going to come in here and she has on the Hudson pants with a little variation that she's invented and she's added pockets and she also has on the cottage shirt with the famous bird print. And by the way, we have another bolt of this. We just got in. So we had run out of this when we had this fabric on sale. So this bird print is on sale again. 
uh, for another week because we got another bolt of it in. But turn around so we can see. She made it really short in the front and really long in the back, and I think it's a really cute rendition. So she's wearing a little tee or tank underneath to sort of extend that length. She took home a remnant, I think, is yep. what happened. So that's why it's a little bit shorter in the front, but I think it's really, really cute. But both of us are wearing uh, the Hudson pants in viscose linen, which I'm going to talk about in a minute. Thank you. You're done. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> All right. Um, but before I do that, I'm going to talk to you about another pant style that we rarely talk about. And I don't know why, because we love these pants. They're called the um, urban pants. And that's right here. So the urban pants have a wonderful waistband. They have a flat waistband in the front and elastic all around the sides and the back. So you get this nice flat part in the front and not too much bunching. The thing I like about this pant is there's no side seam. None at all. So it's really smooth. And I was curious about this. Um, we used to have a person here by the name of Bev who I took pictures of in the urban pants with no side seam and a pant that had a side seam. It's now called the Chesney pants. And so obviously with a side seam you can shape. Well she had a waist and pretty good hips and so I was thinking well this is never going to work on someone with that kind of shape. But I realized that because it was so straight up and down on the sides that she looked straighter in this style of pant than she did in the ones where we actually curved them to fit her. What this does have is a seam down the front and this seam is where a pleat would be if there were a pleat in the pants. And then that allows us to create a vent with a facing and a loop and a button and a nice detail. You know the thing about pants these days is it's all about bottom details. You know, once you get a couple of pairs of pants to fit you, a slim pair, a wider leg, then it's all about the details. Just what Deb did by adding some panels at the bottom. Here we have button and loop and vent at the bottom. And I'm going to show you some other things in a second. But at any rate, we're featuring the urban pants today. So let me show you some other variations of the urbans. This is the urban pant, same pattern. Kathy made this, these pants, but she's added some pockets. So in this case, the front seams have been sewn completely to the bottom, and there's, as you know, no side seam. So she's added a pocket starting at this seam and ending where a back seam would be if there were one. So there's a little pocket at the bottom. And then this side has two pockets, the same pocket as this and another pocket here. So you have that kind of modern cargo look to these pants. And I think this is really, really clever. We have a tutorial called Pant Pourri. And it, it, it introduces you to five or six different ways to take a basic pants pattern and add some fun details to it this being one. So if you're curious to know how this was done and the size of these pockets and what to cut and where to put them, then that's in that tutorial called Pant Pourri. Then we have our Valencia pants. And our Valencia pants are essentially the same sloper as the Urbans. They do not have a side seam. The only thing that's different is the front seam has been eliminated. Same waistband treatment, gathered in the back, flat in the front. So in order to change these, where the side seam would be, there's, I put a dart in the pants right here so that I could insert a tab and a button and buttonhole in that dart. So exactly at, in half of the width of the leg, where a side seam would be is a dart that goes up to here. And then I added those details. Also in that tutorial are two ways to deal with the Hudson pants, which is what I have on. One is 
You still have the darts. That's where the dart idea came from, actually, on the Valencia, was to, uh, there are darts on the Hudson pants. In those darts, I've inserted some loops and then done a drawstring so I could gather the bottoms up with drawstrings on the bottom of these pants. And Erin made these, turned her Hudson's into joggers, leaving the darts but adding the bottom band to draw them in. We now have the Maison jogger pattern, which we didn't have at the time that you were doing this. But either way, they have a similar, similar look to them. Our Maisons have drawstring and a different kind of waistband and pockets and all that. But nevertheless, you can take the, the Hudson pants and do a jogger style detail to them. And then also in that tutorial, it's just a simple way of transforming the helix pants by simply cutting them off and adding a contrasting band. There are two lengths, by the way, we forget to talk about this. In the helix pants pattern, we have two lengths. We have a short length, a cropped length, and a full length. And I can't tell you exactly if this is the line where the short length was. It may have been. It may have made it easy on myself. But at any rate, uh, two lengths, so if you like, uh, a more cropped style for summer, then that is in the helix pants pattern. So those are our variations of Urbans, Valencias, and Hudsons. So that's in a tutorial called Pant Pari. I was digging around in my old Threads magazines, <clears throat> and Threads magazine July 2010, issue 149, one pant, five looks, and the, the only, there is one pair here that I've talked about, and the other four, I have no idea where they are. They're somewhere in our, in our archives. But if you want a fun article about changing the style of your pants, here it is in threads. While I'm talking about threads, I found a couple of other interesting articles. In uh, January 2010, number 146, Louise Cutting and I did a, an article on our favorite fitting tips. And I think this is a really h hilarious uh, illustration of Louise and me. <laughs> it's like a cartoon. I've never looked so good. Kind of fun. Um, I was going to see if there were any pants ones in here. Yes, uh, so we have Linda's solutions, Louise's solutions. I have a solution here, wrinkles be below the derriere. Now see, in this, they use derriere. They, they have a better word than, than I do. So, and then my other problem, oh, the one that you were talking about, uh, narrowing the leg, the back leg, it's in here on page 42 of that issue. This is issue 146, January 2010. And then in 2014, issue 175, I did an article on self-fit your pants that addresses some of the issues. Uh, but it's a good uh, pictorial of how to measure and how to use that tape measure I've been talking about that has the numbers at both ends. So those are a lot of... A lot of reference materials for you here today. Too much to read. Could you repeat all the issue numbers? Sure. All the issues are self-fit pants is in November 2014, number 175. Fitting tips from the pros, Linda Lee, Louise Cutting, January 2010, number 146. And one pant, five looks, July 2010, number 149. All right. Okay, um, so we have the urban. And then I want to show you um, 
just because if you have the urban pants pattern or plan to order it, which will be on sale this week, it comes with another top with it. So it's a pant, pants and a top. And I thought I'd show you the tops that I've made that are slightly, uh, a slight variation. Normally the urban t-shirt has a, a flange and it's all one piece in front. But I took that diagonal seam and in this case put a zipper where that diagonal seam is and used up some of the scraps of, stri of striped knit fabrics and just applique them on and stitched around the edges. They're all raw edged. And I think this is a really cute little t-shirt. I did the same thing in the long sleeve version. Both the long sleeve and the short sleeve versions are in the pattern. So here it is in the long sleeve. And in this case, I went to the basement and I dug out all of, not all of by any means, but some of my daughter's more interesting knit garments that she no longer wears and cut them up. It was kind of hard to cut them up, I have to say. This was part of a skirt that she had when she was a little girl. Uh, she, I used to buy her all these really fun t-shirts that had graphic things all over them, uh, and at the time she didn't care for them at all, and I loved them. So I still have them, and I'll cut them up every once in a while. This was part of a t-shirt, some center medallion on something. Here's some stripes that I put in there as well. These I zigzagged on and straight stitched on, but it's a fun uh, kind of remembrance of some of the clothes that she used to, to wear as a kid. So I certainly have the tubs of clothes that I could, would be an endless supply of scraps and fabrics for the rest of my life, that's for sure. Okay, um, so the fabrics that uh, I'm showing today are viscose linen. Now, we talked about linen a month ago or so, Aaron and Alex, and that was your linen week, wasn't it, and Betsy? Um, but, and you know, there's always the resistance to wrinkling with linen. So we have for several years now been carrying a lot of colors of a blend of viscose, which is rayon, and linen. It has the characteristics of linen, it has the characteristics of rayon, but I love this fabric and this is a fabric that we stock year-round in various colors we have summer colors we have winter colors we order whatever they have and we keep it in stock as best we can all the time and it's just one of my favorite fabrics yes it wrinkles I've been wearing this all day and it's a little wrinkled but I think it's a nice wrinkle uh, this is the splice top I've used two colors it's called the splice because there are insertions little panels on the side and I used a contrasting color for those. This little panel is a, an inch or so shorter than the rest of the garment. I like this open neck. So this is a very, very nice summery uh, feel for me. You know, you can get some air through here. The sleeves are not too long, open neck. I feel, I feel like summer, although you put this in wool for winter, it's a great winter top as well. But it's the perfect fabric and perfect style for today and I have on the Hudson pants in the same fabric. And so I thought I'd show you all the colors that we currently have. We have a few more colors actually on the website, but we don't have much of them, so I didn't put them on the wall. Um, but we have white, white, you know, white, white. And I was trying to decide, no, nope, I have on natural. Okay, so here's white. We have limestone. And we have we're calling this eggshell, and this is the color that I have on. It's pretty white, but it's clearly different when you put it next to white. But it's subtle. But I'm a little more of an eggshell girl than a white, white girl. This is the aqua that I have on as the insertions to this. This beautiful blueberry blue and denim blue, kind of an indigo. These are all the same fabric. These are, the mix is 60% viscose and 40% linen. Now when I hung these on the wall yesterday, my tendency is to press everything with an iron on the ironing board before I put them on the wall, but I didn't do that yesterday. I thought, I'm just gonna see what happens. So I put these on the wall, I did give it a little vertical steam 
And you can see I left the wrinkles in it, and it, it left this kind of nice little crinkle to it, which I don't know if I call it a crinkle, um, just a soft wrinkling, I guess. And I thought it was really nice. Now, if you took this to the ironing board and ironed it, you'd get a nice crisp look that lasts a long time. So it's not something that you have to do. You can wear it a little bit rumpled, or you can, if you're someone who really likes a, a more crisp look, you can get that with this fabric as well. So this is kind of the light side of the wall. Then we have this, this is the color that Deb had on, this kind of cinnamon color. What do we call this? Um, copper, it's probably a better word. This one is called mustard. This one is coffee. I don't know if you've noticed, but we don't have a lot of brown fabrics. And that's because there aren't many out there. I don't know why this is. So whenever I find a good brown, I try to get it. And I like this brown. It's, it's kind of milky. And it's, it's just nice. I think can, it goes with a lot of things, including this red. I thought it was pretty with red. So this is the red is called geranium. We have ivy. And then, of course, my favorite color, which is the one I have on, which is citrine. So I have on the citrine and the Mykonos blue. And no, 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 I have on the aqua, don't I? Never, aqua, sorry about that. <laughs> so those are the, what are, are there? Uh, there's another color here that I didn't put on the wall, more of an olive. So there are colors here that can take you into fall. This is a, a fabric that I think can just almost take you year round. Maybe not in the dead of snowy, deep winters, but it's a good fall fabric. It's a good spring and summer fabric. It's really a good all-purpose fabric and has been and, con and continues to be probably one of our favorite solid fabrics to use in, in the store. And we will continue to carry this in all the colors that we can get, get our hands on. I have a couple of other fabrics that I wanted to show you. Um, I brought out the red geranium dress, and we have a couple of new fabrics that just came in, and I thought I'd show you. This is a, really a cool fabric, and it just came in, and I think it would make a fantastic geranium dress. Gardenia. What'd you say? Gardenia. <laughs> what did I say? Geranium. Ger <laughs> <laughs> got my flowers mixed up. <laughs> this is called geranium this is why I think I said that. No, I probably said that because I just can't remember anymore. No, we'll it's not that. even called geranium. It's called tangerine, orange, lipstick, red floral. I have no idea where I saw geranium. Maybe this is called geranium. There you go. I'd like to think that's, <laughs> that's the way it is. And then I also think you just can't beat a good English floral Wedgwood blue and white print for a gardenia dress or blouse. <laughs> this is fairly new as well. All right. We'll see if I can hold it together long enough to answer some questions. <laughs> okay. Um, these are a couple questions about the urban. Okay. Um, do you use a stabilizer while stitching on the scraps to the t-shirts? Oh, on the, uh, oh, on sorry, the top? The, the, yes. Do I use a stabilizer? I, yes. I don't use a stabilizer through the whole piece, but I do use fusy web around the edges to glue it down. But it's not fused throughout, just around the edges to get through the stitching stage. What is the fabric, the pants that are right behind it, the urban pants, um, what fabric is that? This is silk noil. And let me tell you about silk noil. I have a sort of love-hate with silk noil. Silk noil is not a fine fabric. It's the bottom of the barrel silk. It's made from short fibers that you basically have swept up off the manufacturer's floor. I like the texture of it. I love the colors of it. But it's not a fabric that lasts a long time. So if I'm investing myself in pants, I, for the long haul, I'm probably not going to use silk noil. Now, having said that, I'm about ready to order a bunch of silk noil. But just know 
that it is not something that's going to stay in your closet forever. It might fade as some silks do, a lot of silks, all silks, and silk noil is one of those that will fade over time. So, but this is silk noil. And what is the benefit um, to the viscose linen versus 100% linen? Well, I think you have a, a different drape uh, with the viscose linen. This is a drapier fabric than a lot of linens. Uh, as, as drapey as some linens are, particularly the laundered ones, they're still not as drapey as this. So I think there's a different hang to this. And the fact that it's rayon, uh, has the amount of rayon that it does, it wrinkles differently. It doesn't have that crisp, sharp, wrinkle and fold to it. It's more of a soft wrinkle, which I like better. This is about fitting. Um, does the fitting book cover what order to do adjustments? Yes, the adjustments are in the order that you would do them. Do you start with waist size or hip size? You st for when fitting pants, you always start with hip size and then you adjust from there. Hip size, and you do all, you, you establish your starting size from your hips. Then you do all your lengthening and shortenings of strides. And that makes me realize I answered the question previously incorrectly. Uh, because I think I said you did the full hip and then the stride, that's not right. Um, so you do all your lengthening and shortenings first. Total length, lengthen and shorten of the stride. Then you shape the hips and then you shape the waist. That's the order. Pattern adjustments for forward tilting hips. I end up rolling down my front waistband, but the back waistband is fine. That's a set of the waistband. I suggest that you go ahead and cut out the pants at the normal height. And before you put on the waistband, you get those pants on and you adjust them to where they sit right on you, where the stride is correctly fitting, the back is where you want it, and then you put your elastic or whatever around your waist and, and it's going to be lower in the front. This is super common. Low in the front, high in the back. And then get everything kind of evened out to where those pants are sitting just exactly correctly on you and the waistband is where you want it. And then you chalk mark at the bottom of the elastic. Take the pants off, true up that chalk line Add 5 eighths of an inch to the top of that, don't forget that, and then cut off the excess fabric. Then take that fabric and put it on your tissue pattern and cut off the excess tissue, and then you don't have to think about it again. That is stated in this book. Um, but a lot of pants fitting can be done with a different set of the waistband. Just because the pattern tells you to put it right there doesn't mean that's where it's supposed to be. So resetting the waistband is in this book on page 33. Can you add pockets to the urban pant? Well, can you add pockets to the urban pant? You can, um, but it's not easy. You can have a couple of choices. You can add a dart at the side seam and put a pocket in the dart, or you can uh, do a, a welt pocket, or you can put a side seam in the pant. You know, in our one seam pants, which is Valencia and Urban's, we have a notch at the waist. And that's the indicator of where the side seam would be if there were one. So you could make a side seam. Um, you, you could do a patch pocket, obviously. Is there any other pocket you could do? I think that's about it. Yeah. Um, the, I think the pants you showed from the tutorial, what fabric are the, is? Which ones? Um, maybe all of them. It just says what fabric is used in those pants. Oh, well so these, I'm not quite sure. Okay, so these pants are linen. Linen. Ponte knit for the Helix. Rayon crepe for the Hudson's and um, knit, kind of a double, double knit for these Hudson's. And then Deb's pants. Deb's pants were the viscose linen. Deb's pants were this color right here. Obviously, this viscose linen can be made for pants or tops or dresses. 
It's a really versatile fabric. I have, I have viscose linen pants in olive, this eggshell color, in this color, um, I feel like black. We're currently out of black, which is interesting, but we'll have it back in. Can't have to have black, you know. Can you see through the white or any of the other lighter colors? I don't know. Can you? The answer is no. I'd say no. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> okay. I do have on neutral undergarments. You know, I suppose if I had black undergarments on, they might show through, but... That's a good rule, though. I mean, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, what is the weight comparable to? Um, is it comparable to 100% linen, handkerchief linen, medium, lightweight? I would say it's comparable to uh, medium linen. It's not handkerchief linen at all. I mean, it's not handkerchief weight at all. Um, is it best to iron the linen blends before cutting out the pattern? I think it's always a good idea to press your fabric. You know, if you have creases or folds that stick up a little bit, you know, your cutting's going to be off and your sizing will be off just a little bit. So I always press my fabric before I cut out. I press my patterns too, assuming that was part of the question. If I wanted to plan on washing um, by machine the pants, the viscous linen, um, would it be best to hang to dry on a regular basis or live on the edge and toss them in the dryer regularly? Oh, um, I wash and dry the fabric first when I get it home and then I cut them out. And in the case of these white pants, um, I kind of go back and forth on washing and drying them, washing them, hanging them, and dry cleaning them. I don't always do the same thing to them, but I don't over dry these pants. How does it behave differently from regular linen? I wonder in sewing well, it's, maybe? Well, uh, sure. in terms of wearing it, it's, it's drapey or it moves differently. You have a little more movement in the, in the fabric. Um, sewing wise, it sews the same. It's a stable fabric, it's easy to sew, there's nothing slippery about it. It's an easy sew. Seam finishes are just simply stitching it and three threads surging the edges and pressing the seams one direction. You can top stitch it. It doesn't pucker. I don't use any special equipment. Of course, I always use my Fusy Web to hem things. I use a walking foot all the time when I sew. It doesn't matter what the fabric is now. Or I, I engage my even feed feature actually on my machine. Um, I, this is not a pesky fabric to sew at all. It's a dream. For those of us that hate wrinkles, what is your suggestion for pant fabrics um, in hotter climates and warm climates like South Carolina? Uh, for those, uh, well, well, what doesn't wrinkle in the heat? I don't know. Maybe cotton knit? <laughs> Maybe some cottons. Rain I knit. think knits would be kind of hot. There would be certain cottons, like the Liberty of London cottons are very lightweight. They don't wrinkle very much, and they're very cool to wear. Uh, so I suppose cotton would be the best if you don't like wrinkles and you don't like heat. Yeah. I can't think of another fiber. Uh, polyester's not going to work for you. You know, those are the ones that don't wrinkle the most. In fact, we're going to be introducing a fabric here in another month or so that's a polyester that's a fantastic liquid fabric that doesn't wrinkle at all, uh, but it's, it's polyester. <clears throat> I don't buy much polyester, but when I, find, <clears throat> excuse me, when I find one that I like, I'll go for it. Somebody suggested cotton gauze. Cotton gauze? Okay. The, one of the troubles with cotton gauze, uh, you would want to make a loose pant with that because it tends to stretch out, bag out. So you, uh, cotton, Cotton gauze to me is, um, if it's crinkled already, that'd be all right. But you'd want something loose, like the West Ends, even the Hudson's. 
Urbans, by the way, um, they're not oversized. You're going to want to measure the hips on this pattern and make sure you're making the right size. Uh, I can go down a size in the Hudson's and the West Ends from what I normally wear in the Valencia's and the Urban's. I wear two different sizes in this. Are the fitting books similar to the fitting workshop we took with you in Topeka years ago? Loved yes, it. it was taken from that book. Yeah, so if you have that book, you have 90% of what's in there. Oh, those binders? Uh-huh. Oh. Yeah. I added a few things, but for the most part, it's the same concept. Yeah. Is the trim on the helix also a ponte knit? The trim on the helix, um, yes, it's a printed ponte. Kind of a glazing on it, kind of a metallic gold on black. It reminds me of a fabric that you could actually stencil. You could maybe take some ponte and stencil on it. Okay. And you can, can design that design in your morning journal. Can you pull the coffee brown down to cover the mustard so I can see if the coffee and spice would work together as a top and bottom? in closer. Okay. That works for you, Janet. Okay. Okay. So can you repeat which pants have the one seam? Repeat what now? Which uh, pants pattern has the one seam? Oh, we have two pants patterns with uh, with no side seams, and that is the Valencia pants pattern, which is a download pattern, and the Urban pants. Every other pants pattern that we have has a side seam. Um, someone did ask about the bird fabric um, and what colors might coordinate with it. Do you know offhand? Since well, we yes, uh, we don't have it up here. Deb left, but this um, mustard would go with it really well. Uh, I think this red. I know I've put the bottom one. The what's the that coffee one or the. Um, I've put that one with it. Okay, so the copper, mm -hmm. the mustard. We think the red. I'd have to check that. I wonder if this goes with it. I think so. I think so. The the aqua or what this that one? one I've this put one that does one. too. Mm -hmm. Okay. It looks really I wish nice. we had this up here, but we don't. Those are the ones we've paired, we've had some people okay. request and ask, and those are the ones that we've used. Okay. So. Um, what percent should I guess the linen rayon fabric will shrink in the first wash and dry? I haven't figured out that it shrinks at all. So you shouldn't have to plan for a lot of shrinkage, if any. Uh, what size splice are you wearing? I'm wearing a small splice. Would you consider adding extra, extra smalls? Uh, extra, extra smalls. Um, maybe. Um, for the one in 100,000 people, who are extra, extra small, maybe. Um, I don't know. Um, we've talked about expanding our size ranges completely. We've been adding at the other end to XXXLs more often than we have done. We have one pattern that has an extra, extra small, and I can't think what it is. Or else maybe we. Splice, I think, right? I think it's the splice. Mm -hmm. I think it is this mm -hmm. one. Right. And that sometimes happens when we get into the grading and final evaluation of a pattern and we realize maybe we're one size off and so what we thought was an extra small really is an extra extra small and so we shift the sizes that that happens uh, but we'll think about it I mean it's obviously a good uh, a need 
Due to heat and humidity, the wicking fabrics are comfortable. Are there any patterned or prettier wicking fabrics? You know, I don't currently have any wicking fabrics. Uh, it's an interesting question because I just received some samples the other day from a company in Canada that sells fabrics that are wicking. Um, those fabrics tend to be in the athletic category of fabrics, which is fine, but not always for you know, daily ready to wear. But I have been kind of looking at some of those, but we do not have any at the moment. Um, we have so many great pants patterns. Would love to see a chart that compares the features of each, like waistbands, seams. We could do that sometime. I think that's an interesting comparison. I used to do a class about that at one point, or when people would come for so so Kansas events, we would do that. And it's pretty easy to categorize things in terms of fit and who these are for. Uh, we can do that. We'll, we'll make that a Facebook Live one of these days. We did get um, a couple comments about um, an interest in the extra, extra small. So okay. Looks like we have five so far. So. Wow. Okay. Um, any other questions? Oh, I do see one more. Um, the caftan that you talked about, was that last week? Um, what was the fabric? That fabric was cotton gauze. <laughs> yeah. With the embroidery. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay, I don't see any other questions. All right. So, good questions today. Thank you so much for that. We have all the fabrics, all the viscous linens on sale. The urban pants and top pattern, the splice pattern. So splice is download, urban is printed. We have, I have to get my little notes here, three tutorials. The DIY pants fitting tutorial is on sale. A tutorial called the urban cardigan, how to do this is on sale and the pant pourri that has the nine variations of pants is also on sale. So those three tutorials today, fabrics and tutorials and two patterns. Do you want to take a couple questions that kind of sure. came in? Um, would the viscous linen work for Hollywood pants? Oh, the viscous linen would make beautiful Hollywood pants. Mm -hmm. Great mimosa pants. I can't think, I think the only pattern I probably wouldn't consider would be the jeans. Or the but knit. I don't even know why you couldn't do that. Or the, yeah, or the knit patterns. Well, and of course helix. our helix and pencil pants are really made, made for knits. So any, any pattern that's built for a knit, I wouldn't do the viscous linen, but yeah, make gorgeous Hollywood pants. And then we did have a couple questions on, um, do you have any fitting classes in the next year or any Sew Kansas? Do we have any Sew Kansas or fitting classes next year? We do not. All right. All right, that's it. I'll see you next week. Thank you.